Hi, welcome to the Xena Engineering Complex. I'm Justin Dothard, Facility Services Project Manager here. Let's go take a look inside. This is the John and Ann Tickle Atrium. This is the circulatory heart of the building. Uh, you can see that it's predominated by a mon monumental stair that goes up six stories. And its uh, railings are composed of Corten steel, and that's what you see here. When it's illuminated, which it will be, it will glow orange. Uh, it has a neat sort of flowing pattern to it. This is just a mock-up, so you'll have to sort of use your imagination to imagine that the entire staircase, even on the underside of the two, is clad in this curtain, uh orangish brown steel, and it goes all the way up. So it's really quite an, uh, a sight when you enter the building from the ground floor on the south side of the building, and also when you enter from the north side on the first floor too. You'll have the same sight of this very glowing orange staircase going all the way up the atrium. This is the Cow Innovation and Collaboration Studio. This is the primary maker space for the building. It's serviced off the, to the side by metal and wood shops. And you can see off to the right here, the big uh, roll-up doors. They're gonna be made of glass, plenty of light coming through there. And when the doors are open, it will open onto the outdoor patio there. And the idea is for there to be maker fairs, uh, opportunities to bring what's going on inside outside. From the atrium we'll be entering the first year engineering fundamentals uh, design area. This is going to be somewhat equivalent to the engineering and collaboration studio in the fact that students will be creating projects in this room. Uh, they will have access to the wood shop and metal shop in proximity as well. So this is the northern entrance to the building off of the former Estabrook Road. We'll walk, go ahead and walk around here and I'll show you. Off to the right here will be uh, what's called a, a, an Aramark pod. And for those of you who went to school here when there was no dining on the hill, this will be uh, quite a revelation for you. So behind me is the first floor of the atrium. On this corridor are a lot of the student success programs. So off to the right, or off to your left I should say, is the advising program. Uh, further towards your left would be the diversity programs office and then if you keep wheeling around to the left uh, you will find the uh, professional practice programs. Again from the atrium we're entering the northeast wing of the building. This is uh, predominantly a research floor. You'll have laboratories off to the left and further down will be the secure corridor for the nuclear engineering radiation laboratories. So we're standing on the second level of the atrium looking towards the south. Um, if you look towards the back there, you will see uh, a niche. There will be a lot of, uh, on each level, the same type of situation where there are booths or informal study areas. There will also be uh, interspersed throughout the floors of the atrium, lounge areas, again, for informal studying. Uh, if you look further back there, on levels one, two, and three will be the active learning classrooms for the Freshman Engage program. So right now we're standing in one of the active learning classrooms for the Engineering Fundamentals program. Uh, there will be three of these, all of them the same size, and what's interesting about these spaces is you can see it's one big room, but at the touch of a button it will be capable of being subdivided into four quadrants. Usually walls divide spaces if they're in an automatic fashion, they do so horizontally from the sides. But this room will have, in addition to that, a skyfold wall, which is a wall that descends from the ceiling. And so in this space, it will descend immediately from above us and then come down and divide the space in half. And then the other two uh, horizontally operating walls will come and meet that skyfold wall and divide the space uh, into the floors. Here we're standing in one of the Cook Grand Challenge Honors Program classrooms. Uh, you can see they've made uh, quite a bit of progress in here already. Plenty of light in this space. This space will also be capable of being subdivided into two via a folding partition. Uh, plenty of floor, floor power um, and audiovisual equipment on the walls. So this is the entrance to the Dean's Administrative Suite. We're on the fourth floor and we're entering off the atrium. There will be a lobby area where we're standing right now. Uh, wood paneling on the walls. Uh, really interesting reception desk made out of uh, stone. And if you walk around to the waiting area, sitting area right here, and then straight ahead is, uh, is a conference area. The Dean's uh, administration 
uh, would be really all around us offices for those folks. Uh, straight ahead would be some of the senior administration offices. And we'll have It's actually the Dean's office, uh, quite a view. Where we're standing right now is in an area intended to be more of a hospitality area. There's a catering kitchen further behind us, right there next to the Dean's administration suite. So this area will be able to hold functions of a fundraising nature and, and what have you and then be able to infiltrate onto the terrace for the same. So let me take you into nuclear engineering now. So uh, this is the administrative suite for the Department of Nuclear Engineering. Uh, there will be a reception area right behind us. Further down the hall here would be some of the offices for the, the uh, high-ranking members of that department. So we're standing now in the uh, office of Dr. Wesley Hines. Uh, as you can see, plenty of space, lots of natural light, great view off to the left there. He's going to be really proud of this one. No, I'm just kidding. This is actually the nuclear engineering conference area. So coming off of the atrium, we've come into the fifth floor of, of uh, Wing 1. This is an area for offices, for principal investigators in the Flex Laboratories, as well as their graduate students who, and, uh, and their postdocs who are assisting them. So where we're standing right now would be an open office area, and then the offices on the periphery here would have glass walls. So plenty of light coming in from the exterior windows through those glass walls into this space where we are right now. All right, so we're standing in one of the Flex Labs. Uh, this is on the fourth floor, but there are plenty of others on other levels. We have the from the, really from the first floor all the way up to, uh, to, the, to the fifth floor. Uh, this particular one is, as you, as you can see, still in progress, but uh, eventually there will be a bunch of lab benches and fume hoods uh, in spaces like this. Plenty of power, plenty of utilities headed here. And really, it's called a flex laboratory because the occupants are not necessarily known as of today. And the university is really trying to pioneer something where they generate a laboratory that can be used by a range of engineering subdisciplines. And so we're trying to future-proof these labs so that they could be used by a wide variety of people. So one of the nice things about the laboratories in this building is that they won't be buried in some bunker. They're actually well above grade and have plenty of natural light. And if you look out the window here, it will help you orient yourself. Uh, towards the left is Perkins Hall. Above that is the Surf Building. And then off to the right is Ferris Hall. So we're on the roof now. Uh, we're at the penthouse level. You can see the clay tile roof to your right. And it, as we pan around, you'll see the, the east skybox of the stadium. And then looking down here, on this flat roof will be a green roof, and this is one of the few on the campus. Uh, being so close to the river, we had a lot of stormwater mitigation requirements for this project, and one of the ways that we accomplished that was to have a green roof, which would retain a lot of water and either evapotranspire it or uh, direct it to a few roof drains in a very slow fashion. So this green roof will be visible from the skybox of the stadium. It will have a design uh, in it, uh, there are the sedum plants there that are arranged in different colors and, and patterns that will be discernible from the stadium and from above. And likely on game days, from blimp shots, you will see that. Group. So we're standing on the fifth floor of the atrium. This is the highest public level of the atrium. Uh, and it really gives you a sense as you look down at the depth of this atrium space. This is the heart of the building. You can see the staircases that are suspended intertwining between floors. So thanks for coming on this tour of this today. Uh, this would conclude it. Uh, this project is on schedule and it's on budget, set to open in the fall of 2021. Uh, this project's been worked on by Blaine Construction, designed by McCarty Wholesaper McCarty in Knoxville, along with Smith Group out of Detroit. Uh, really an interesting and I think going to be a, a fabulous addition to the campus and to the Tickle College of Engineering. So thanks again for coming.